the late Miwa was an individual who exemplified one of our core values as Zuni people, and that was compassion. The late Miwa was an extraordinary person within Zuni history and culture that was very influential. She was a definitely identified as a female, but at times knew that she was a male. Our first ambassador to our tribe, he was accepted for who he was, welcomed in Washington, D.C., speaking on our behalf. She really helped get our voices heard as a tribe that bridged the gap to people understand that we are not just Native Americans, we're people. And it all started from great individuals like the late Riwa. The Zuni people are located in current day Zuni Pueblo on the northwest corner of New Mexico. However, we've always called who we are in our language as Ashui. Keshe, hello. My name is Curtis Kwam. I am the museum technician and culture educator for the Ashui Owl Museum and Heritage Center in Zuni, New Mexico. And I've been working with Google for this interactive doodle honoring the late Riva. The late Riwa was born a male in Zuni in 1849 and in her lifetime identified as a female. You can call him a he, you can call him a her, but in our language there's the third gender which is called Sahwana. In Zuni, these individuals were highly regarded because of their dual role in society. Hi, my name is Mallory Kotowki. I am a Zuni artist and I created the artwork for the Google Doodle celebrating the late Riwa. The concept for this doodle is not only learning about who Wewa was, but to also put a light on the craft that he was so well known for. Weaving was more of a male role in our society. And then on the other hand, mostly women did pottery. And he did both. The late Riva was very versatile in what she wove. More often than not, we see her weaving sash belts or for the ladies, the manta dresses that we call in our language, ehayatonan. These textiles and designs are very important, whether it be social or for ceremonial times. So in the doodle, as you're playing the game and weaving, you're being told a story that weaves in and out of our history. These fibers, these strands can transcend and be seen as metaphors of us being brought together. When I was asked to create these works of art for the doodle, I really had to think about what I see around the community, something that we saw in Wewa's time, but also we still see today. Zunis, we're known for these little folded breads, and you can say it's the ladies' club when it's bread baking day in Zuni. And Wewa was definitely someone who was participating in that. As for the artwork, I wanted to try to go full on with the color and get it on a canvas. However, I had to kind of step away from my normal process and actually sketch out an idea, throw it out there for the team. That was a little challenging, but once we got the ball rolling, I created my sketches with chalk pastel and then paint completely. When people see this doodle, I hope they feel a connection to their ancestry. Not just the Zuni people, but I think for Native people in general, start a dialogue of who and what is important within our lives. To hear the story of Wewa and how revered he was in our tribe should give other tribes that sense of pride as well to go back and to bring about their old customs and remind the younger generation to think about the ambassadors, the caregivers, you know, the mothers and fathers, individuals from the past who exemplified the culture. I think this doodle is a beginning step of how we can bridge these communication gaps to be part of this continuing conversation about inclusion and choosing someone as iconic as the late Riwa is contributing to this bigger picture of who we are as people. Thank you.